It has become apparent to me that you've not managed the nation well. We've got people out in the streets right now, starving. People being forced out of their homes. No budget, no control. People are rioting in the streets, demanding control, and you can't seem to give it. You are the government after all. You should be taking action right now to change the nation and make it stable again. The issue of starvation comes from a lack of food. Species have become extinct due to your inability to take action against some of their predators. When you took firearms away, you made a great decision. People will be unable to rebel effectively without proper weaponry to defend themselves. Not that you would be opposed to bombing them, but you need to look like the hero in the media's eyes. Even though the media is controlled, you must remember that there are still some who believe they have freedom of the press and will endeavour to spread the issues publicly as far as they can. Not that those people can't easily be silenced without attention. But why go to all the trouble? When you took the ability to hunt wild animals away though, and you left predatory species to their own devices, they began to amount massive numbers, and effectively wiped out other species. Cows and chickens, endangered. Pigs, extinct. Meat prices have skyrocketed as a result and people are not getting the vital nutrients they require. Sure, with legalization of domesticated animal slaughter such as the dog has allowed for the issue to be somewhat contained, there are multiple people who still protest this. We've come down to eating dogs, cats, and even the rodents that you've marked off as Nutri-Meat that you've purified. On a personal note, it tastes most revolting. Overpopulation is quite a major issue in the world now. What, with an estimated 20 billion people? People are dying from starvation in the inner cities anyway. We need to exploit this. You've had to deregulate currency twice. This has caused widespread poverty, and now hundreds of people occupy five station apartments in your major cities. The rich and middle class, and those who work for them, have come to living in armored, dangerous fortresses armed to the teeth with legal firearms. You could go in and wipe them out, but it's just too much work for you isn't it? Soon, they can amass an army in revolt. You need to get propaganda going, instill fear in the urban society of these rural dwelling potential rebels, who grow ever cautious and fear your power every day. The ones who will grow with the force that could combat your military quite soon. Oh, your military. Jobs cut? How many people have you lost? The destabilization of law enforcement and replacement with military forces wasn't very smart. All you've done is prompted your people to only believe the ideals those anarchists hold dear. You have instilled in them that they are not free, that they are threatened and they are not safe. It's true, but they cannot be made to believe that. I'll admit that we're doing better than the majority of other countries, but let Russia be an example of what could happen to us. Now they live in camps, gangs, militias, and states battling for power amidst the fallen government in war-torn Asia. Europe? Destabilized, but still alive. Desperately trying to control the people, when they cannot and do not have any power over them. But who has benefited from nuclear war, economic collapse, and the fall of modern government? Africa. Africa has become an empire now, and they pose an even greater threat than the anarchists in your own country. They are unified under religion, class, and structure. People are leaving their homeland to join the new empire. Although such an empire is small, it will only grow as the people lose faith in their own nations. You have the strength to eliminate them, but only if we unify the other governments. My proposal is a new plan, and a new order. Let me reveal myself. I'm not simply a concerned citizen, as the title of my letter. I am the owner of the only company that has still remained stable despite economic collapse. I have a monopoly on, uh, just about everything now, and I can fund you with the means if you provide the control. A company like me has no political power, but plenty of economic power. I could simply wait until the government dies out, but then I would be left with no loyal military and only the PMCs I've bought. Not enough to combat Africa. Back to my proposal though. 
First, we must deal with the overpopulation, as I said. I propose that you collect those in poverty from the inner cities, and send them to me for processing. We'll be knocking out two birds with one stone. Overpopulation, and starvation. Morally horrendous? So was the chemical weapon bombing of Korea, with the weapons that you banned. Besides, we've already done this. Illegally, mind you. But it has worked effectively. And what we have described as being a simple block of meat, vegetables, fruit, grains, and dairy that people require to survive daily is something that the people we've offered can't get enough of now. It's addictive. We've discovered adding alcohol and pharmaceuticals has kept their mental stability in check too, and has made them more susceptible to discipline and control. Truly, this covers three problems. You can control the people as well through this. It's just like those old movies describe. The meat tastes quite delicious. All I need is your check mark and signature, and then your people start sending those undesirables to us. Second, on the topic of instilling fear, you must not be afraid to have some of your own. Taking out commission for the purpose of convincing fearing citizens of the threats of the rebels, we can motivate them with this fear to join your military and build up your government. I could suggest perhaps having public shootings attributed to the rebels. Women and children seem to provide the impulse to stand up. So perhaps gather up some of them and have them eliminated. Young children especially, such as babies, will prompt quite a response if shown bloodied and dead on camera. You can motivate these people to slaughter the rebels. We can even provide some of the weapons as well. We do have that kind of funding. On the topic of Africa, the same must be done as the latter, but instead, simple public shootings will not suffice for such a large force. Instead I suggest nuking a small city of your choice, but make it one that will certainly be a drive to the people. Make sure it is tragic. Then my company will attack, in secret, the other governments contributed as an African attack. Hopefully then, you can establish diplomatic relations with the other nations, and turn them against Africa. It'll be a long fight, and you will have to create more and more propaganda that will support you, and turn the people further against the Empire. Possibly more attacks? But be careful not to contradict yourself with your lies though. Religion must be removed from the equation as well. Moral values with Christianity, Islam, Judaism, and other religions will prompt those still faithful to their beliefs to speak out. This will be difficult to deal with. So might I suggest instead the slow assimilation of all religions? If we unify them under us, and we manage the religion, we can eventually eliminate value after value, rule after rule, until all that is left is that which is beneficial to us. You will have to be careful doing this, and always appease the majority. The minorities can be wiped out easily, Contribute as being rebels, of course. But this must be scarcely done so not to arouse suspicion. Finally, I propose an ID chip and the destabilization of all currency one final time. The currency in this government will only cause debt to rise and its unstable trade. Destabilization one final time will make a mess of things. But if you establish trade rather than a system based on currency, things only traded for their value and worth, Bring about gold, silver, and other metals as the primary form of trade until you can establish the ID chip. The idea behind the chip is that anyone who wants to engage in trade must have to verify that they are a citizen. When this is over, we can establish currency to purchase things such as food, fuel, commodities, and such. But raw materials can only be traded. This will keep things stable, will keep people loyal, and you will build your economy back up. How does this benefit us? What do we stand to gain? Well, I want a place of power in the new world order. Of course, you will be in control of this country. But I simply want a place at the table. And I'd like to be able to continue my research without legal hassle. Thank you for taking the time to read this letter from a concerned citizen. Thank you for sticking around to the end. 
If you enjoyed today's story, don't forget to leave a like. And if you want to hear more stories like it, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you'll never miss a story. Oh, and if you haven't already, don't forget to follow me on Twitter so you can keep up with the latest goings on on the channel.